In November 2018, Dr. He altered embryos using CRISPR technology to create babies that were resistant to HIV and AIDS in China. He inactivated CCR5, a receptor that allows for the virus to invade healthy cells. His actions sparked outrage in the academic community, although his colleagues who were aware of his actions at the time did not take measures to stop him. Though his intent was to increase resistance to HIV, the inactivation of CCR5 can cause further genetic implications and increase a child's risk to other diseases, such as the West Nile virus. He is now facing three years in jail and carries with him the reputation of Frankenstein doctor and has been banned from practicing or researching ever again. But has this stopped researchers from pursuing gene editing research? In fact, the exact opposite has happened. Researchers are now in hot pursuit on how to edit the genome in foolproof waves. In October 2019, researchers at Harvard believed they had found the way through prime editing. Prime editing is an extension of the CRISPR-Cas9 system that was the earliest technique of gene editing. The CRISPR-Cas9 system is a defense mechanism in bacteria against infection. Bacteria have repeats on their RNA, which have associated proteins called the Cas9 proteins. To learn more about CRISPR and Cas9, feel free to check out other videos on this channel linked in the description box for an in-depth explanation of CRISPR. Essentially, the CRISPR-Cas9 complex cleaves our normal double-stranded genomic DNA. Two RNA sequences form a structure that attract the Cas9 protein and form this complex. Upon the double-stranded break, it is repaired by one of two possible mechanisms, non-homologous end joining or homology directed repair. Non-homologous end joining can cause random insertions and deletions into our DNA. And so researchers focus on homology-directed repair as the more precise method of genome editing. It inserts a sister strand to fill up the gap created by the break in DNA. The sister strand acts as a primer to trigger the synthesis of a second strand of DNA, and your DNA becomes as good as new. We can hijack this repair by inserting our own variation to the sister strands and editing our DNA with great precision. Despite these promising advances, the CRISPR-Cas9 system is not without its risks. There can be consequences due to off-target effects. HDR can be accompanied by the formation of unwanted insertions and deletions. Prime editing has offered a way to control these off-target effects. It has taken what we know as CRISPR-Cas9 and added a few extra elements to it, including the prime editing guide RNA, or PEG RNA, the prime editors, and the enzyme reverse transcriptase, which is implicated in the process of reverse transcription. Reverse transcriptase is an enzyme that is used to make complementary DNA strands from an RNA template, which is a single strand of DNA. The formation of this DNA duplex is part of reverse transcription, a process that viral particles go through when they enter their target cell. Once again, part of an infectious mechanism is being manipulated by scientists for use in prime editing. PEG RNA contains a primer binding site to initiate transcription of new genetic information and a reverse transcriptase template with edits for the targeted DNA changes. PEG RNA needs the help of prime editors to edit the genome accurately and efficiently. There are two key editors in this process. PE2, which is conjugated to reverse transcriptase to incorporate the new genetic info. It is also conjugated to the Cas9 nickase, which causes cuts in the DNA. PE3 makes prime editing precise and efficient by ensuring that the DNA strands are cut one at a time, instead of like in CRISPR where two strands are cut at once. By controlling the nicking so that it's done in sequence, prime editing can reduce the amount of unwanted insertions and deletions. Prime editing is still in its experimental stages, but the hope is to use it to understand advanced diseases and possibly edit human genome to prevent diseases from happening. Let's take a look at what the people have to say. According to public surveys, people are not completely opposed to the idea of gene editing. Some have said it could make people healthier and that the pros may outweigh the cons. 
Last March, bioethicists and scientists proposed the creation of a council consisting of bioethicists, biologists, and biomedical specialists to act as a coordinating body who consider and judge the use of gene editing before it is actually performed. This paper suggested that all research of gene editing should undergo five years of experimentation at least before it is ever used in human embryos. While we have these great technologies available to us, it is still important to understand the risks and consider aspects like accessibility. Will this treatment be available for public use and how much money is needed for safe research? In addition, will gene editing help those with a family history of rare diseases reproduce or just further the stigma as those with existing diseases cannot benefit from gene editing of an embryo? These questions remain as the research goes on. Thank you for watching.